Well, howdy folks, how's it going today? I hope you guys are all uh, doing really good uh, and having a great day today. Well, if you've been following the channel, I've been uh, working on this Burswood electric guitar for a couple days. Really inexpensive. I think you could get these on Amazon maybe or somewhere like that. Uh, it was basically unplayed. I actually peeled the plastic off the pick guard. Uh, guessing this is probably 15, 20 years old, something like that. Uh, in any case, uh, I had to do quite a bit of work to it to get it intonated and playable. So I'll explain that in a second. Uh, let's just go through some of the sounds and uh, see what it sounds like. I haven't heard this guitar for quite a while and that's the only reason I kept it because it did sound good. So let's start right on the uh, neck pickup. Uh, let's see, let's play something funky. strats here and they all sound a little different this one sounds uh, kind of right like right in the middle of all of these they all have like you know some of them are a little darker some are a little more chimey and sparkly and this one kind of lives right in the middle of it and that's where I where I really uh, wanted it to be so now I have a different option you know for tone recording that kind of stuff Okay, so that's the neck. Let's go to position four, which is the uh, neck in the middle. Yeah, I was starting to get that clock, you know, with the two pickups, you know how that is. Like it. It's not too glassy. It's kind of warm. And it's still got that, you know, kind of spunk and snap like a, a strat should. You can hear the clock and uh, tell it's a strat. Okay. Let's go right to the middle pickup here. This is usually where I judge a lot of three pickup guitars. The middle pickup is junk, then your positions two and four just aren't going to sound right. And that middle pickup really does play a big part in that. Uh, I've noticed that over the years, and uh, you know, obviously I've played a few strats in my life, so here's the middle. Yeah, it's got some bark to it, and that's, that's what I look for. I don't want it to be real trebly it needs to have a little bit of beef you know in the bottom and that kind of does so let's uh go back to position four again which is the neck in the uh, middle now let's go right to the middle so you can hear that middle kind of shining through okay so i'm good with that that's a that's a nice sound and pickup Let's go to position two, which is the middle and the uh, bridge, so. That one's got some clock to it, huh? still a touch high I might drop that down a little bit but not a ton it's pretty close I just noticed like this E string is a little high down on the uh, bridge end I think they could all drop down just a whisker maybe you know 10,000 something like that not a lot anyway uh, that's the uh, uh, Middle and the uh, bridge. Nice clock to it. It's not glassy and crazy, you know, treble sounding, but. I 
like it. All right, so let's go to the uh, bridge position on its own and see what that sounds like. Pretty nice. It's pretty, uh, pretty trebly. You know, uh, if you wanted to uh, play country or something. You guys know if you pick like right over the pickup or behind it, that's where you get the twang. If you pick up here, it's going to sound fatter. Pick it back behind the uh, pickup. Okay, just a little trick. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty satisfied with this guitar, honestly. Now, here was the issues. Uh, I was trying to intonate the guitar, and uh, the E and A string needed to go this way with the saddles, and I bottomed them out in the, uh, the bridge. You know how that goes, so couldn't intonate the guitar. Well, one of the viewers pointed out in one of the videos that I shot that the nut was on a skew. It was actually cut crooked, and they you could tell they as soon as they cut that line, they cut all the frets to match it. So everything was kind of off, to be honest. I don't know what happened at the factory. Somebody had a bad night or something. But anyway... Uh, I cut, I took the nut out, took a razor saw and cut the uh, slot straight, took the wedge out and, and I moved the nut and then put the wedge that I removed on this side of the nut to uh, skew it in a kind of a straight position. I actually went by it a little bit. So it's kind of tweaked, you know, this way, just a whisker. And I actually probably could have went a little more. I'm still almost to the end of the bridge, you know, with my saddles almost all the way back. But I did get it intonated. So as long as it's good there, I don't think I'm going to have any issues. Uh, it was quite a process. I mean, it wasn't, you know, that laborious, but it was something that I, you know... You, you have to do it. I didn't want to do it, but, you know, it's no good. If I can't play the guitar in tune, it's useless to me. You know what I mean? So that is something you want to check and uh, just keep an eye on that. And then uh, all the frets had lifted. Go figure. So I pressed them all back down, hit them with super glue, and uh, then I had to clean up all the mess, you know. But it's all clean now, and honestly, you can't tell that that I was even in there with super glue. So uh, that's usually a good sign too. I hate doing it, but cleaning that super glue up is it's no fun. You have to get a razor blade and just kind of scrape the fretboard to the fret both directions. It's real tedious, and it takes a nice fine touch to do it without you know digging into the wood. Okay, so it's uh, it can be done. It takes a little technique and a little practice to do it, but once you get the hang of it, it's not a big deal. So anyway, all the frets are, are in there solid. They're glued. I dressed them, leveled them, uh, crowned them, and did the ends again. And you can't feel any frets at all on this. Nothing. So, uh, you know, that's a big thing, too. I don't care if it's a $10,000 guitar or a $10 guitar. If the fret ends are poking out, they got to go. I mean, it's, I just, that's all I think about when I'm playing a guitar. If I'm getting, you know, if it feels like a saw blade, it's hard to even focus on playing for me. It's just like, uh, I no, I'm taking it to the shop and I'm going to fix them and get it fixed because... If not, I just won't play them. They'll just sit and collect dust. So I've done this many, many times. All these guitars have had the frets done. 
uh, at least once, you know, not refrets all of them, but, you know, getting them cleaned up and getting rid of the uh, shaft ends and recrown, that kind of thing. So uh, it's always good to keep an eye on that stuff. You know, humidity, dryness, you know, the change of seasons can really affect your guitars. Uh, it really does. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight sometimes, but it can happen in a week sometimes, you know. Maine's a really different climate here. We have, you know, five seasons. We have, uh, we have uh, you know, summer and fall and winter. And then we have uh, mud season and then spring. So, you know, you main woodcutters know what mud season is here, right? And probably every woodcutter that does it in, in other states probably has to deal with this too. I don't know. But here, you know, they basically shut the wood screws down for at least a month till uh, stuff kind of dries up and all the frost is out of the ground. And if not, it's just a mess. Well, anyway, enough about mud season, guys. I get talking. I can't. I just get telling them stories and I can't stop. Anyway. Position two sound. It's got that nice kind of. I don't even know how to describe these sounds. It's just you guys can uh, make your own assumptions. But in any case, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, you know, thanks to Tony, the guy that pointed this out on the nut. I really appreciate that, bud. I do. Uh, you know. You guys see something in the videos, leave a comment. I'm not gonna like, you know, jump on your back and say nasty things. I just, it's not my thing. But, uh, you know, it was good of him to say that. He said, I noticed in the video that the nut looked crooked and was skewed this way. And, you know, when you're shooting videos and working on these things, you can't, it's hard enough to work on them, let alone trying to be out of the view of the camera and all that stuff. It's really, it's really a pain doing this, you know, not this, but, you know, the, uh, the work videos and the bench videos, it's, you know, sometimes I just won't shoot them. I'll, I'll just, if it's too intricate, I just put the camera away and do my job. And, uh, you know, after it's done, I may shoot a video and explain it, but, you know, a lot of times it's just, it's just not in the cards and I, I take pride in what I do and I want to make sure my work is correct. Uh, the videos isn't, you know, those are not such a big deal to me, uh, but how about that one? You guys know that little... I call that the grease when you're putting the grease on you know that's a fun little thing to do in funk tunes you know you know it takes up you gotta get your grip just right so I'm playing a an E7 right it's like C7 but E7 so that's it and uh, you know you just hit it once slide it you do it twice basically uh, it's kind of cool and you don't hear guys doing that a lot so it's tricky to get it in there you know in punctuation and, and in time sometimes but fun though anyway uh thanks again for watching guys i hope you're all uh having a great day like i said in the start of the video and i hope that continues for you uh well i'm gonna put a pin in this one everything's good to go the only thing i gotta do is tighten the uh jack up i did notice the jack was a little loose when i plugged the cord in so i guess if that's the only thing left that's a good thing uh 
you know, these inexpensive guitars can, can actually be really good guitars with some work. And that's kind of my thing, you know. When I first picked this up, I plugged it in and played a few chords on it. And I was like, wow, this thing actually sounds really nice. So, uh, and the neck's nice. It really is. It's a, it's a good feeling guitar. It's, it's, it's full thickness. I mean, it's not like a, an affinity or something like, you know, that's thin. They make them a little thinner. This is a full size, uh, body. You know, I'm going to compare it to like a Squire, but maybe not. Uh, it, the way it came set up is, is probably compatible to most inexpensive guitars. It's just, you have to go through these steps. You got to fix the frets, press them down, glue them, pound them in, whatever you can get away with. And, uh, you know, intonation is usually an issue with them too. I don't know why it takes just as long to uh, drill the holes and cut the slot than, it, you know, the right way than it does to do it the wrong way. I'm guessing maybe, you know, tooling, it can be an issue. Everything's done with CNC now, so once the tooling wears out and stuff, the tolerances get funky, you know, and that, that can do it. I mean, we, are, we are talking sometimes a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, uh, and that can be more than enough to throw out the intonation on the guitar and it changes the scale length, okay? So... It's just something to look for, and again, big shout out to Tony. I really appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, I'm sure I'd have probably noticed it eventually, but uh, in any case, it's good just to have somebody leave a comment and save me all the, uh, you know, it might have took me a few hours to notice that uh, when I was working on it. Like I said, it's tough to video I'm trying to look and make sure everything's in the frame and in the shot more than I am actually like doing my thing. So, uh, you know, some videos I just can't shoot. Like I said, it's just, it's too involved and too intricate and I'd more than likely be in the way of the camera and you know, some jobs I just can't video. I will do my best to try to explain what I did and, and you know, that kind of a thing on the repairs that I don't video, at least, uh, you know, take walk you through the technique of how I got there. Well, anyway, folks, you're probably sick of listening to me now. Uh, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Big shout out to all the new subscribers. Welcome aboard, folks. Uh, this is kind of how it goes. Some days, some days it's playing guitar. Some days it's fixing them. You never know what's going to happen, so we like to keep it like that, you know, just mixed up. Nobody wants to watch the same old crap every day. I get it. And, uh, you know, I try to break that up as best I can. Sometimes I can't. You know, if, if I have work to do and guitars to repair, I have to, you know, that kind of comes for us. So, uh, thanks for bearing with all the, uh, bearing with me through all these, uh, videos. I really do appreciate it. I know some of them are probably quite boring, but, uh, you know, if you're in a pinch and your guitar's messed up, they won't be that boring when you go back and get the information, okay? that That's the biggest thing. It's just not so much for entertainment purposes a lot of times. It's more for instructional and, uh, you know, trying to pass this info along to the up-and-comers. So, uh, these guys... You know, someday they may, if YouTube's still around after I'm gone, you know, maybe this stuff will be useful and beneficial to some of these, some of these people, okay? Uh, well, thanks again. We'll see you guys real soon. Be good. Keep playing. Okie doke.